Hello, the time right now, uh, what is the date first? The date is April 6th, 2022. The time is 4.50 p.m. My name is Fond, or Carson Melton, it's your choice. And today is my daily video diary. There are some people being loud in the house, so I do apologize if you hear something in the background. I can't control that. And you probably won't hear anything, but you might. But who cares? Today, I uh, today the sixth is International Asexuality Day, or whatever you want to call it, the day everyone celebrates asexuality, those who are ace. So I want this video to be about my asexuality. Why I'm ace? Why not? What it means? I've already made a video on, uh, not a video, I made a, a Twitter post and basically wrote it all out today. So I've already addressed it. But I figured I'd talk about it on video as well. Maybe that'd be uh, more eventful, I don't know. Uh, but yes, I am asexual. I am, uh, more specifically, at least what I consider myself to be, is only romantic asexual. Which means uh, I don't really have sexual desires, not very often. It's mostly I want romance. I'm into people romantically. Uh, and since it's omni, that means I'm. it doesn't matter what gender you are, but I do have a preference for uh, women or you know, feminine people, you know, a femboy maybe. You know, might sound weird, but if you're feminine enough, that's what I prefer. But it's not limited to that. If I catch feelings for a guy, it doesn't matter what you got. That's what I care about. Uh, so that is the kind of asexual I am. However, I also lean towards demisexual, which is having sexual desires for someone who you have feelings for. Uh, and to be frank, a lot of my emotions and feelings counter like counteract what I say. It kind of makes me sound like a hypocrite sometimes. So I usually don't go out of my way to tell people I'm something in particular because that changes and I have different opinions in different situations. Uh, some people might know very little and have some desires for them. Sometimes I might just suddenly have a desire. Maybe I'm really into someone, but I still don't like the idea of having sex with them. There, There's a lot to it. Uh, so I usually just call myself asexual and leave it at that. It's a good apple, by the way. To me, asexuality has been a <clears throat> not much of a burden. Uh, to me, it's been more of a just something I've discovered over the years. There are uh, L asexuality is under the umbrella of the LGBTQ plus A asexuality. Uh, you know, that entire umbrella. There are a lot of people who are different, and there are a lot of asexuals who have suffered a lot more than I have. A lot of people have encountered uh, prostitution, people making fun of them, uh, a lot more pain from individuals. Thankfully, I have a lot of supportive friends. My family doesn't know, but my family is supportive enough where they probably wouldn't really care. So I'm not, I don't live in a place, nor have I experienced too much of a fear or regret by telling people. Uh, usually people just, it's whatever. So my suffering, well, before I go on, I should say I'm very thankful. I'm very, very thankful that I have not suffered in the same way as some other people have. But at the same time, I think all suffering is equal and that it all brings pain in some different ways. So I think it all should be considered suffering. You shouldn't try and label someone else's suffering more than someone else's. You should just address it as the fact that they're in pain. So my suffering is different. I'm thankful not to have that kind, but I have my own, which kind of sucks. I might get apples stuck in my teeth. Huh? I can't tell. For me, I've known I've been asexual for probably probably around six years now. I've kind of known 
I've kind of experienced it, kind of felt it, kind of determined that this is how I feel, this is how I am. But it was never really pressing. Like it never really came up in conversation or in me trying to find love early on. Nothing like that. So it was more like something I kept in the back of my head. I never really looked into it. I never really claimed it. I never really did anything with it. I just knew this is this matches how I feel. So I'm probably asexual. And no one ever really asked. I never really told anyone. If someone would have asked, I would have told them I was. I've never been ashamed of it. I've never hidden the fact that I am. But it's not every day someone comes up to you and asks, hey, are you asexual or asks what your sexuality is, you know? And normally when someone asks what your sexuality is, they don't, uh, I wouldn't say asexuality. I'd be like, I'm mostly heterosexual, you know? I have a preference for women. You know, because a lot of people aren't actually wanting an in-depth answer of, I'm actually this asexual and I think sex is overrated, blah, blah, blah. People don't want that. So usually I wouldn't answer like that anyway. Um... But in, in the later years, once I graduated high school uh, and started experiencing things in life with, you know, more sexual things, uh, interest in people uh, and whatnot, it became more more apparent that I need to address what I believe in. There are people who don't understand it. And I so, of course, I need to understand it if, you know, I don't have to answer to someone. If someone needs to ask me what it's about. And I went through a few things that have been like, Okay, well, I should probably figure out why I feel this way. There's a, there's a lot of suffering in it. There's a lot of suffering in uh, being an asexual in, in different ways. Very, very different ways. I freaking love apples so much. Um... I'll say, I guess the next part I should go into is how I actually feel about being an asexual, like what I feel in romance and such. As I said earlier, uh, I am a romantic in the sense I, I do feel love for someone, but it comes from the romance, from feelings of them. It comes from them as a person. It doesn't come from uh, sexual desire. It comes from the fact that I can be with someone, I can love them, I can take care of them. Uh, you know, I can make sure that they feel loved and vice versa. You know, more of a personal connection, less than a, uh, an instinctual, animalistic connection. I, uh, that does not mean, I don't want that, that does not mean I'm unwilling to have sex with someone or, uh, you know, get a little frisky if things go that way. If things, you know, I believe, I, I like kissing people. If if I kiss someone and we start making out and it naturally goes into more of a, a sexual undertone, you know, I'm... Not necessarily that I'm going to be super into it, just once it reaches sets, I end up feeling like this feels kind of weird and I'm no longer into this. Uh, this feels kind of like a waste of time, which is a little bit of an overreaction on my end, I think, to be fair. Um, but if it if it naturally goes into it, I'm not opposed, you know, especially if it's someone with who I, who I love, you know, someone I care about. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll continue on. But it's not something I seek. Also, I think it's totally unnecessary to, to have sets or need to have sets or feel like sets is an important part of a relationship. I feel like at that point, it just goes on. Hold on, I'm being interrupted. Never mind, I guess they weren't coming here. I swear I heard someone at the door. Anyway, I don't think it's necessary to have a loving relationship. I think... It's something society has uh, greatly built itself upon, this animalistic instinct for pleasure. And I think it is just destroying people. I think sex kills more people uh, internally than it helps them. There's a reason why uh, people say, you know, rot stars love sex, drugs, you know, women, whatever they say. The reason drugs and sex are related is because both of them are addicting, they give you pleasure, and eventually they ruin your life, you know? It's something that people get sucked into, and I think it's more harmful than not. Uh, it, to me, it feels unnecessary. It feels like it's something that has been forced upon us, uh, like an an expectation that shouldn't be an expectation. Like, who cares? Who cares? I I I don't fall in love with people because I want to have sex with them. I fall in love with someone because I like them as a person. I don't 
need to have sets to show them I like them as a person because I don't care about them. I, I can show, I can tell them, I can let them experience love by my actions. I will make sure they're taken care of. I'll make sure they know they're loved. And none of none of that is necessary uh, for sets. You know, I don't need to sit there and fuck them to be like, yeah, I fucking love you, girl. No, I'll give them some flowers, take them to a nice dinner, make sure they're taken care of. You know, hold their hands, kiss them, cuddle with them, watch a movie. Have a conversation, listen to their problems, listen to their 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 successes and things, you know. Uh, it'll be personal. It's not going to be just something we do. So I think that should be left as a, a byproduct to romance and to love, not a expectation. But unfortunately, our society and people are kind of the opposite. A lot of people feel like it's necessary in a relationship, and they feel like if it's not there, something's wrong. And that is very, very saddening. It truly is. That people feel like you have to have sets, and if you don't, something's missing. Um, I just finally on that point, I should say, I think sets is more of an animalistic instinct that people get addicted to. I don't think sets is love. I don't think it is. I think sets stems from a, a place of greed, selfishness, where you want to be have pleasure and people get into it and it becomes a habit and eventually it stops being as fun as it used to be. And then you start just going through people. Uh, it's betting more and more because you're just trying to get that feeling again and again, but it's just not working. It's not worth it. And then sets, I think sets can very easily destroy love because people stop caring about others and they're just looking for that one thing. And people cover it up by saying this is part of love. This is part of romance. Now, don't get me wrong. I think if you love someone, I'm not saying you shouldn't have sets with them. I'm saying there, there is, it is intimate. You know, but I think more people than not end up going down the path that is not how it should be. Uh, sets is not a byproduct of their love. Sets is an initiator. That's why a lot of people, you, you seem hooked up, or a lot of people, one of the first steps of them getting into a relationship is fucking each other on a night. It's ridiculous. And that's that's like the normality. I hate it. Uh, the, the reason I'm asexual, I think, before going to that, I should probably say, uh, what should I say? Oh, yeah, no, I'll go into that. I think the reason I'm asexual is from seeing stuff like this. Uh, my parents divorced when I was very young, probably about six or so. They were divorced. And they, uh, my father had drug issues. My mother was an, uh, an alcoholic. A lot of issues. Custody got switched back and forth. I went to my mother. Uh, to my dad got in trouble. Then I went to my dad. Just, she got in trouble, blah, 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 back and forth. Uh, things are better now, thankfully. But, you know, I experienced what happens when... People don't really love each other, and they start trying to be together. If when there's no communication, there's no love. I started to experience that at a very early age, and I saw how it ruined my family, saw how it ruined my childhood, and a lot of other things. And then once once I got into school, mostly high school, because that's when this stuff starts happening, uh, I witnessed kids getting in and out of relationships. People one week these people are a couple, then the next week they're broken apart. It's just this on and on and on. And there was no commitment. There was no real love. Uh, there was nothing besides broken hearts. People didn't stop and care. People were just using each other for sets. Um, it became a thing. Oh, have you lost your virginity? Oh, what's your body count? Blah, blah, blah. Just ridiculous. Um, and that just happened on and on. And I would feel that hurt me. I would watch these people do this and that hurt me. It wasn't just... I was looking down on them like they're idiots. I was some extent. I won't say I'm some perfect person. I most definitely thought they were below me at some extent. And my asexuality sometimes comes off as very, very entitled because of my viewpoints. Um, but it hurt me when I watched them. I'd watch people get heartbroken left and right. There was, And I'd see people go into relationships. And I'd be like, this is not going to work out. I would see people I had feelings for go into relationships. There was a girl I was into for several years. And she got in so many different relationships. And every time she got into one, I was like, honey, this guy doesn't love you. You know, uh, she rejected me several times. I don't, I, I mean, I tried, you know, 
to be with her and to, to help her out and take care of her. But no, it was just a cycle of endless no non-commitment, uh, fickle relationships that were based on desires, not love. I'm not saying you should fall in love in high school, you know, but that's what I saw and I didn't like it. Um, then it went on to eventually I had a, uh, my room's been by my father's for most of my life. I'd hear my father having sets uh, in, in the room over, uh, like near me, whatever. Uh, many, many, many times. I, I, at one point I was counting, but at this point I just don't care. I'm so desensitized. I don't know how many times I've heard him have fucking someone. Which is no, there's no problem, you know. Having sets is just society's way of doing things. But then I would, but then he'd bring over different girls. He'd get in relationships, and then he would bring over someone new, and I'd and I'd hear them. I'd be like, "That's not the same voice I've heard before." And I realized my father is just having sex with people. Uh, he's probably cheating on people. And then I realized there's no love here. That's just or or whenever he would get with someone, it would just be a bunch of sets. Is this what love is? I'd ask myself, "Is this what love is all about?" Sets. How long you can last in bed? How much pleasure you can give someone? Is there not a way to to show someone you love them without that? Is there not a reason I can't walk down a path without that and not be tempted to fall into the trap that is sexual intercourse and just show someone I love them for who they are? Not because I want their body. Not because I think it's important. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter who you are. What is love? What is romance? Is is romance like chivalry? Is it is it dead? Is it really a thing anymore? Is it just this idea that people wish they had but no one tries and go for? I don't know. I saw that for a long time, and I think that's what has sent me down this path of asexuality. Uh, you know, I think asexuality is that most other things you're not born with it, but depending on the situation you're born into, it helps influence it, and I think that's why my mind ended up going to the sense of me thinking sets is is this idea that it's more harmful than it is beneficial and that's not necessary that's something you can cut out and be maybe even happier without but unfortunately the world doesn't work that way it doesn't think that way you say something like that people think you're weird you try and love someone and it's really fucking hard I um I guess the last thing I really want to get into is my struggles with asexuality, why it sucks for me, and why at some sometimes I wish I wasn't asexual. I should probably get into that now. I really want to keep eating, the, eating this apple though, but if I keep eating this apple, I won't talk. So <laughs> I guess I should hold off on eating this apple. It's really good though. It's really, really good. Whew. Anyway, anyway. Uh, the reason, uh, well, my struggles with asexuality, as I said at the start of this video, uh, and now we're finally back to it. Um, my nose is itchy. Is I have never really struggled too much with other people trying to call me out or be weird about me saying I'm asexual. Most of mine is an internal fear and strife. Uh, let me let me just. It's hard to. I'm just gonna explain it one step at a time because it's kind of hard for me to try and word this in a, in a, a way that sounds scientific or even maybe poetic. I don't know. I, I usually like trying to do stuff like that, but this is too raw for me to try and do. For me, I, I get really really scared, whenever I start having feelings for someone. I get very scared when I start. You know, crushing on someone, something else. Uh, I don't show it, and I don't tell people about it. This is the first time, uh, besides on Twitter earlier today, when I've really ever mentioned that I get scared or there's a certain fear that builds up inside of me whenever I start having feelings for someone. Uh, the reason I have that is because I am asexual. And not many people are... There are quite a few asexuals out there, don't get me wrong, but I've never once had a crush on an asexual. Everyone's, you know, just a normal person. 
Or they have something else, you know, but they're not an ace. Uh, and so what happens is this. I will start crushing on someone and then instantly I'll doubt myself. I'll start thinking, what if I'm not enough for them? What if they, you know, want sets, but I can't perform what they want? What if they feel like that's a, that, the scariest part, there's a difference. There's a certain level. And there are people, there are normal people who just think sets is, uh, you know, they're into it. And that's, you know, kind of rough because I start wondering, maybe I won't be enough for them. And then it's even worse when you get to people who believe sets is a necessity to show love. Because then it's even worse. Because then it's like a guaranteed thing. And it's, it's once again, it's not that I'm afraid of sets. It's not that I'm super against it. It's not that I'm like normally repulsed by it. But it's the fact that since I'm not super into it, I, I fear that whenever I start doing it or get to the point that they won't be satisfied with me, that they'll feel like I'm not enough that maybe this person I'm in love with will feel like I'm insulting them or that something's wrong with them and then they'll start doubting themselves or maybe even worse, they'll go off and they'll cheat on me because they need someone who wants to have sex with them. Uh, and not that I don't want to be intimate. I've never been with someone I truly loved. So maybe I'll maybe I'll be into it if I'm really into someone. You know, Maybe, uh, maybe these worries aren't really fruitful. I don't know. But right now, these are what I think about. Uh, yeah, and what if they... Once again, what if I'm not enough... And, the problem is I've learned from my experience that whenever I get, uh, whenever I'm in a, a sexual situation like that, I end up uh, depersonalizing. So more or less, I don't feel like myself anymore. It's almost like I'm in a dream. Um, I remember the first time I ever had sex. I, it was so fucking weird because it was like everything got foggy and I felt like I was in a dream and it felt like a chore. It felt like, it felt like increased masturbation, like, uh, extra steps to it, not increase, just extra steps. And it felt like I, you know, I don't have, I don't mind because I get a lot of joy out of pleasing other people. So that's fine. But I still doubt myself in the sense of, am I going to be enough? Maybe whenever I start doing something, if they want to, uh, they'll end up catching this, they'll end up realizing that something's off with me. Maybe they'll realize I'm not the same person I normally am. Maybe they'll realize something doesn't feel right. Um, maybe they'll start thinking that it's something wrong with them or they'll think I'm just not interested and then they'll be like, he's not interested and there must be something wrong. Or maybe uh, I'm just not, maybe since I don't have the same sex drive as they do, maybe I physically won't be enough to, you know, please them sexually. And there's a lot of things, there's a lot of thoughts like that that form whenever you're, whenever I'm crushing on someone who's, who's quote unquote, you know, a normal person who, who expects that. Uh, I greatly fear it, it's one thing, I don't necessarily fear them not understanding because it's fine if they understand, but I'm really afraid of them understanding. But even though they understand, it doesn't matter because they still expect that and they want that. So uh, you're still not enough, even if they understand. You know, that's what I really fear. And the problem is it's hard to to control who you get feelings for. So it's like an innate fear. It's not like I can just control it. It's I, I fall in love with someone. It's like, oh shit, well, there it goes. Time to worry about this. Under the tops. Wow. My goodness. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of fear that comes with being an asexual, especially when you're uh, falling in love with someone who's not an asexual, someone who might may not understand it, uh, may feel like they cannot date an asexual. It's it's like starting with instant self doubt and starting with an instant obstacle, and it makes it really hard to feel. Uh, safe, you know, having feelings for someone else. That doesn't stop me from, you know, telling people that I have feelings for them, but it does, it hurts me internally because I'm always, it's always, like I'm always fighting with myself to to tell myself I'm, you know, I'm good enough to not worry about that. Uh, on on the second note, you know, that's a me thing, but there are, there is some things you experience sometimes from other people. Whenever someone doesn't understand what asexuality is, you gotta explain it. You gotta explain what it means. You gotta explain what it does, what how it makes you feel, and there's a lot of times I've experienced when someone has interest in me, and I don't have any romantic interest in them, and of course I don't have any sexual interest in them, and they're they're coming on to me, and I have to tell them like, hey, I'm just not interested. I'm you know, asexual. I'm not interested in any of this, and then I'll explain it to them. But it, instead of them listening to the explanation, they seem to imagine it's an excuse that I'm just lying or something, or that they just can't believe it. And they end up taking it like a personal attack on them. It's like I say I'm asexual, and they hear 
you're fucking disgusting. I can't imagine sleeping with you. You know, that's what they hear. And it instantly made, it, it sucks because then they get upset with you. And you're like, why are you getting upset with me? I'm just trying to tell you how I am. And then you feel like you're being attacked or not misunderstood. And it sucks. And then, you know, uh, they're not understanding and they're all emotional because they feel like you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they're, you're, you're rejecting them in a way. And they're also feeling like you're fucking attacking them. Uh, and it really sucks. And then the worst part is whenever someone starts making jokes about it, my least favorite joke that someone has told me before, I said, uh, sorry, I'm not interested. I'm asexual. And then they sent me a fucking meme back and it was fucking, haha, you're a sexual predator. You know, asexual and predator. I was like, oh, thank you so much. That is so funny. I'm slapping my knees. I'm crying laughing right now. <sighs> no, you did shit like that. It's like, come on now. You know, it's not funny at all. You know, why do you even send that? So you didn't, you did stuff like that where it's just, just things left and right. A lot of misunderstanding, uh, and a lot of personal struggles. Uh, there's a lot more to it than people m might imagine. And the the worst part is you can't control it. It's just something you feel. You know, I can't control that I feel this way. But I do wish that I, you know, sometimes I wish I was a more sexual person. I don't regret being asexual, but as I said, sometimes I fall in love with people and I wish I was more, uh, you know, more like society, I guess, where I wouldn't have to worry about if I might not be enough for them, you know? You know? It's kind of rough. That's all it is to it. I'm proud to be asexual. I'm proud that... I love people how I do. I'm proud that I'm not obsessed with this animalistic instinct to fuck everyone I see and to have pleasure. I'm not. I'm very glad that I'm not a pleasure monkey. I'm so glad I'm not a pleasure monkey, and that instead I'm just, I guess, a monkey. I don't know. With uh, you know, I I want to love someone for who they are, not because you know that pussy's popping. Anyway, I don't think I have much more to say. I mean, I'm asexual. I'm proud of it. Uh, this is the first time I'm really addressing it outwardly. I've never hidden it. It's the first time I'm addressing it outwardly, I suppose. I seriously hope one day that I uh, you know, meet someone who uh, I don't necessarily have to be asexual, but someone who understands it. I don't mind having sex with someone I love, but it'd be nice to meet someone. Who feels the same way. Someone who recognizes that just because I'm not having sex with them doesn't mean I don't love them. And they recognize that there's more ways to love someone than to uh, you know, be so uh, normal about it. I don't know. It never worked out in high school. Uh, I never really used asexual as a thing, you know. I've always I've always loved people uh for a long time, very indirectly. I've only ever had crushes on two girls in high school. Uh, and well, actually, middle school and high school. I asked them out. I asked them out both at least twice. Uh, several years in between each time I asked. I got rejected every time. And I was always there for them, always I had their back. Uh, as I said, I watched as some of them went through relationships that were awful. Watched as some of them never went through relationships. Um, they both hurt me severely. And, you know, I still ended up forgiving them after a while, because, uh, you know, I was just, I was truly in love with them. Uh, I almost became a Mormon, because one of them was a Mormon, and I wanted to understand what, why she was so religious. I wanted to understand what she cared about. I almost became a Mormon. I didn't go through with it, though, you know. I was like, I shouldn't force myself into this. But yeah, I almost became a Mormon. I, um, even today, even today, I still, it's not like I'm madly in love with them, like, oh my god. But, you know, a part of my heart is still has feelings for the two of them. And those feelings would probably still be there for the rest of my life. Like about two or three months ago, I saw that uh, the girl who I almost became mourned for actually got engaged. And when I saw her got, uh, when I saw the post of her being engaged and she's kissing her fiance, in some ways that broke my heart again. And I haven't talked to her in years. You know, there's still pieces of them inside my heart that I care about. And that wouldn't you? Know, I'll just love them for the rest of my life. And that's that's my version of love. I whenever I, that's also a reason I've never dated anyone. It's very hard for me to date someone unless I'm interested in them too. 
it's very hard for me because I, I don't want to just get with someone if I don't have feelings for them because I don't want it to just be like what I saw in high school, just hit and go, hit and go. I want that. I want I want to settle down. I want to be committed to someone, make sure they feel loved. I want to feel loved back. And it's just, I think, I'm sure it'll work out one day, you know, but it's just, there's a lot to it. Being asexual and trying to, uh, being a romantic asexual, I suppose, uh, you know, and trying to find someone that you feel comfortable with and, feel com- and it feels comfortable with you is just um, a lot of steps to it. I'm in a rush, don't get me wrong. I'm only 20 years old. I'm not in a, in a super rush to find love and settle down. Don't get me wrong. I don't think I have much to offer anyone either. So I, I'm not trying to put myself out there too much. I don't think I have much to give anyone. And I don't want to be a leech, that's for sure. Um, but I think it'll work out. You know, I'm glad to be asexual. I'm proud of it. I hope I stay this way for the rest of my life. And I hope eventually I find someone who I can share it with. Share these feelings with. They don't have to be asexual, but just someone who, who gets it. Who gets me. Thank you for watching this video diary. Uh, I'm going to be ending it off here. I'm finishing this apple. Really good, by the way. Thank you for everyone who watches. Uh, thank you for everyone who listens in. I shall be back tomorrow. Thank you very much for listening to my diaries. It's very, uh, I love you guys, all right? Thank you very much. Anyway, I'm going to be signing off. Bye-bye.